I've been making motion graphics in Blender for a long time, and over those years, I found several different ways to advance my skills. So today I wanna to talk about my favorite one and possibly the most controversial one, and it's called stealing people's ideas. I'm kidding. I'm, most, I'm mostly kidding. What I actually mean is studying people's work, remaking it with the goal of learning how they did what they did. So today I'm gonna to show you how I actually do that in my own work to hopefully give you a blueprint of how you can do this in your own work and really get better. I'm gonna be remaking the Cubisms series from Raw and Rendered. He is an incredible artist. I encourage you to follow his Instagram, check out this Behance project, it's amazing. So let's jump into that. So when it comes to learning in this way of just looking at other people's work and trying to recreate what you like from it, it takes getting really good at observing. Um, so in this case, three of the things that I'm typically observing is what's the content in it, like the modeling side of it, what, what are the shapes, structures, how would I pull that off? Another thing is going to be the lighting and the materials. And usually one of those three categories is what makes me wanna recreate it. In this case, it's gonna be the structure, how this is made, um, and that's really what piqued my interest on this and what I wanna figure out today. With that description, it sounds like geometry nodes. So I'm just gonna name this geo and go to the geometry nodes workspace. Let's get a new tree and let's get that main parent cube. So we're gonna get that cube here, scale it to five, convert it to a volume so that now Blender can recognize we can put stuff inside of it. So we're gonna get a distribute points in that volume and switch this over to a grid that we can then go like, all right, this looks pretty decent. And then that's gonna be fine because later we can actually scale it up and make more. Um, but we don't really need to worry about that. Now we're gonna do the instance on points node and this is going to be our best friend here with our cube. So let's throw a cube right into the instance socket and then scale them down. And now what I wanna do is get a, I wanna get a geometry to instance node. And this is gonna kinda of act like a join geometry. And this is what I think is gonna be how I'm gonna be able to actually create this almost recursive subdivision type thing um, that I'm seeing in that raw and rendered image. Now, those of you on Patreon, right now you have access to an almost 30 minute version of this entire process on geometry nodes, where I was able to actually slow down and look at how far you can actually take this concept in geometry nodes. You also get project files and some really cool stuff along with that. And if you haven't heard about the Patreon, I have an entirely motion graphics focused Patreon for Blender users. Lots of really cool projects there. I've been really having a lot of fun on Patreon a lot this year. So much content has already been posted. So if you wanna check that out, that is gonna be linked in the description. So what I wanna do is get a brand new cube, plug it in. We're gonna get a mesh to points. And then I wanna turn on pick instance. And now what I can see is I can actually put more stuff within it now, which is really fun. Instance on points, a brand new cube, and we're gonna plug that into the instance. And then now I just need to massage this into fitting. All right, so we have this so far. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this set, plug it in the geometry to instance, and then subdivide the original cube that's creating them to three, just kind of bring them in just like something like that. So there we go, we now have a lot of stuff. I'm gonna get a random value node, I'm gonna set it to integer so I can have a little bit more control over the random selection of all of these. I want another cube so I have more frequency of main big cubes. I'm gonna get a separate geometry node. I'm gonna get a random value node set to Boolean and plug that in the selection. That's gonna create this deleting, like I mentioned, it looks like some are deleted within the cube and I needed to figure out how to do that. And that's gonna be deleting points. I was like, all right, I know what needs to be removed is random points. And so I know that's gonna be done in this way, deleting them like this. And so this is what is gonna create a really cool structure. And then you can play with your seed value um, in order to actually get a structure that you think is cool. I'm gonna get another one of these cubes and turn it into a sort of GeoNodes wireframe. So we'll mesh to curve, we will curve to mesh, bring these guys a little bit farther out, and we'll get a curved circle. This is something I've done on the channel quite a lot. It's one of my favorite things to do. And then point zero 0.01, now we have these random cube wireframes, and then we can do the same exact thing on some of these guys that have the, uh, what, nine, eight, the 12 cubes. So we can highlight these, duplicate it, 
plug it into our geometry to instance. Again, do another mesh to curve and you can see it working. Curve to mesh and then we're gonna go, we'll do a curved circle. We're gonna set the radius to 0 0.003, plug that into the radius and now we have more of these guys having some fun. So now we have finished the structure of this scene. It looks really, really cool. So in terms of building out the structure that I wanted to do from the raw and render design, I did it and that was through a pretty gnarly but very, very fun node tree of all of this craziness. So I mentioned there are three things that I'm always looking at when trying to recreate work to learn from. One is the structure, the modeling, what's going on in it. We just did that. The next thing I'm looking at is material. So I'm seeing a lot of subsurface materials, some roughness on there, some bump on there. Um, also mixing in some metallic material. So there's still lots of randomization to do. There's color randomization, randomizing on different things. There's no discernible pattern here, so it can't be patternable, whatever. So we need to fit. So I need to figure out how to distribute color and randomness and all of this, just like from the raw and rendered video. Let's figure out how to do that with procedural materials. If you happen to be following along, in order to put materials on anything in geometry nodes, you need to get a set material node and plug it on each thing if you're doing separate materials, or you can just place a set material node directly behind the geometry to instance node and then you can just get a new material and grab it there and you can switch over to shading. All right, so this is the uh, guy that we are working with. So there's a few things I wanna do. One is make uh, these cubes beveled and I don't wanna use a bevel modifier cause it just won't work. But we do have a fun little bevel node and we can plug that right into the normal and it's going to do that. And we can bring that radius up to just get a nice bevel so the light can hit it and makes it look really nice and solid. Next, let's turn on our subsurf give everything a value of one and then bring up that scale, turn off that metallic, um, and we can now have subsurf on everything. And let's get random color, let's randomize some color. So we are gonna need to get a color ramp, a noise texture and an object info node. And this object info node is our best friend today. If you're a fan of the channel, you probably see me use this a ton. I absolutely love its ability to see instances. If you're a big fan of color palettes, go ahead and pick a color palette. This is the one that I used in the Patreon video that I recorded. So I'm just gonna reuse it here. And then I'm just gonna go use that. That website I used is called adobe.color.com and it just lets you get hex codes. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull, pull the colors from this that I wanna use. Give it a constant interpolation and then you can start to see all the randomness come into the scene. And then we can go and like maybe add in another random color if you want to make it look a little bit more fun. So this is what we have so far. But like I mentioned, there's also some metallic materials within this uh, whole thing. So what I wanna do is get that. So we'll do a mix shader. I'm gonna go and get a new principled node turn off subsurface, plug everything in and plug him into the mix. And then let's go ahead, get our color ramp. And then let's just steal this randomness um, system, hit shift D and plug it into the color ramp. And in this case, we're gonna go ahead and switch it over to constant. And you can see we can now randomly place metallic. And so I'm gonna bring up the scale, bring up the distortion just so the pattern is different. And then now we can have some metallic, some subsurf, and we can really go nuts with it. And this is what we have so far. Now I wanna notice something, we got a little bit of bump. We also have a little bit of roughness. So we can just make a little, a classic roughness system here. So I'm gonna get a color ramp, get in a noise texture, plug him here, and then we'll move him over and get in a bump node, color to height, normal to the normal of the bevel, which is plugged into both things. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, I'm gonna hit Control T and then use the object coordinate. And then one, one thing I want you to notice is this pattern is duplicated on each one of our instances. And that's pretty annoying. See how that pattern is just the same? The way you can fix that is if you have the object coordinate selected, use your eyedropper, select this, and it's gonna spread the noise across the whole thing. So what I wanna do now is bring my uh, bring my detail to 12, bring my roughness almost all the way to the end. I want it to be very subtle roughness. And then if I bring in the white node a little bit, you can see now we have a really nice looking pattern. Distance 2.1, bring my strength down a little bit. 
And then let's make some roughness now. So we'll just bring these guys down a little bit. I want to get a new color ramp and plug this color ramp into the roughness of each principal node and plug the noise into that. And so I'm just gonna angle my camera so I can see light affecting things. And then if I bring my black into here, looks cool. I'm actually gonna flip the color ramp so the shiny parts are on the, the flat portions of this material. Something like this, and then bring this co color up a little bit so it's a little less glossy and then maybe bring this guy down so he's a little less rough. All right, so we are now done with the shading portion of this scene. We have this nice, really good looking color, roughness, bump. Everything looks pretty close to what um, Raw and Rendered had on his design. So now we're on to the final observation to make on uh, Raw and Render's design, which is the lighting. I'm gonna say it's a one to two point lighting system. I'm gonna create a three point lighting system just to do something that I wanna do, which is kind of accentuate the subsurface, but we're focused on soft and uh, interesting lighting here. So let's go ahead and remake that. So I'm gonna take my main structure here and bring him up about that height. We're gonna get a really big plane, which is gonna be the background, so make him pretty big, and then pick what you want your composition to be. I really like I really like this right here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pick my resolution, get my camera, and then just move him right about there. So this is perfect. So let's go and get in an area light and then bring it high enough, maybe right about there, and then scale it so it's big, so we get a soft light, and then we bring it up like this, we now have something nice. We even get a really nice gradient back here, which is really awesome. I wanna even bring this down even farther, my plane. So now we have this. Now what I wanna do is get some lights hitting the sides here to really accentuate the subsurface. What I'm gonna do is get another area light. I'm using G to move this around. I'm gonna convert, I'm gonna switch it over to a disc, point it that way, and then give my power at like 2000 just so we can see what's going on. What I want to notice here is that the light is casting a shadow on the ground and I don't, also don't want this new light actually hitting the ground and affecting other things. So let's go ahead and create some light linking here. So if we have that light selected, we'll go over to our shading, light linking, click new, and then drag in the object you want to link the light to. So now if I look at the light, turn it on, Turn it off is really going to make this nice highlight over here. Maybe even make it hit more toward like this. I'm going to hit Alt D and get another light to do the same exact thing and hit there. So now you can see, so now we have a light on this side, a light on this side, and we can really see how that light really helps um, highlight those subsurface materials and really gives it a unique look. All right, so this is the final render of everything I'm doing. I think the noise is a little obnoxious. I would make some more flat areas. I would tweak things a little bit from here and there, but the idea and the execution is, is exactly what I wanted to get and looks pretty close to what I wanted to get out of the raw and rendered design. So with that being said, I hope you learned a little bit about how I look at things, how that transfers into actionable things within Blender, of how to recreate things. It does come along with knowing a little bit more about the program. So the more you learn about Blender, the more you're gonna be able to recreate things and learn more. Um, through learning this process, I actually learned new nodes. There was several times where I had to stop, do some Googling, do some research. And if I had not decided to try in my do my best to figure out all of this stuff within the uh, raw and rendered design. I'm completely running out of breath here. Um, if I had not done that, I never would have learned a lot of the things that I did. So doing this is one, you really learn an appreciation of other people's work and you learn a lot on your own and you get better. Cause, and in my own personal work, I find you're either forced to learn new tools and things by doing client work or by recreating other people's work and figuring out how they made the really cool things they made. Big shout out to Ron Rendered. His work is amazing. Follow him on Instagram. I've been following him on Instagram forever. He's a huge inspiration. Love his work. And uh, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Again, check out the Patreon tutorial if you want to check it out. I'm much slower down and there's a lot of cool things that I showed in there, like I said. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.